The Salamanders were nearly wiped out during the Horus Heresy, with most of their casualties seen in the dropside mask of Isvan V. To add to this, the formation of chapters from legions slowed down their revival, but what if that's for the best? As far as we know, there are very few successor chapters that have come out from the Salamanders gene seed, and each one of them are weird as fuck, and maybe even teetering on the point of being called corrupted. So here in this video we will talk a bit first on the Salamanders genetic curse and their redeeming qualities and then showcase the 7 successor chapters and tell you how each one of them diverges from their parent group and why this is something the Imperium needs to be concerned about. So let's get to it. Firstly the Salamanders. So first of all these space marines are very noticeable as compared to other Astartes. They have quite a few genetic mutations due to their gene seeds originating from their Primarch Vulcan who was taken away as a baby by a Chaos Vortex and then disposed in the death world of Nocturne. Their skin is the most identifiable factor, theirs is jet black and also their eyes glow red with an added ability of seeing in the near infrared region. One unusual trait of the Salamanders is that their battle brothers tend to be slower in reflex reaction as compared to other space marines from other chapters. Different to most other space marines, the sons of Vulcan have a close bond with the people of their world and they in comparison to every other marine show the most compassion to civilians and other non-combatants, at times even putting their own lives on the line to defend and save human lives while other Astaris just go by their own duties to purge kill the enemies, the mutants, the Xenos and whatever. They do still have a genetic curse which is called the Unyielding which emerges in three stages. First, the resolute decision making stage then comes rigid inflexibility in decision making and finally unyielding obstinacy even at the expense of everyone's well-being including their allies and other battle brothers. Now the first of the successor chapters are the Storm Giants. These are founded as a Codex of Status compliant chapter on the 36th millennium and initially it wasn't known as to which original chapter it was created from but later it was found out that these Storm Giants were taken from the Salamanders. The Storm Giants have actively participated in numerous critical conflicts of the Imperium, notably during the Third War of Armageddon where around 500 of them in 5 companies battled the Greenskins of Gaskell. The Marines from this chapter exhibit exceptional physical strength, far surpassing even the standard capabilities of other Space Marines. Some discussions and debates suggest that their gene seed might have undergone mutations or might have been enhanced by the Adeptus Mechanicus potentially enhancing their biscopia. Such mutations, although not that noticeable or maybe even a problem, would still attract the eyes of an inquisitor or two. Then next we have the Black Dragons. Officially designated as part of the Mysterious 21st founding during the 36th millennium, the Black Dragons chapter are a successor chapter of the Salamanders. Their origins trace back to the Age of Apostasy, which is a turbulent era for the Imperium. The Black Dragons have quite a visible change. Their Osmodular Gene Seed Implant underwent abnormal growth in most of the Battle Brothers, leading to the development of bony crests on their heads and blade-like protrusions on forearms and elbows. Afflicted soldiers weaponized these formations into dragon-like claws through the sharpening of them for combat. Additionally, distinctive mandible bones and pronounced canines contribute to a fanged appearance reminiscent of serpents. The Inquisition's tolerance for these fluctuate due to the extensive mutations, sparking conflicts with other chapters such as the Dark Angels as well. Many other chapters perceive these deviations as heretical, which challenge the sanctity of the Emperor's genetic design by their changes, so some view this as a corruption. Then next we have the Dark Krakens. These are another successor chapter of the Salamanders, the first here in this list that are of Primaris origins and their homeworld is in opposition to Nocturne which is a fiery volcanic and radiation bathed world. Theirs however is a wet ocean world which is bathed in night so without radiation. The Salamanders are not told or consulted about the formation of these new successor chapters which had their gene seed implants and were created by the Arch Magus Belisarius Call. So first of all, these new chapters were kept secret from them but when they came to know about them, about their existence, they promptly sent a chaplain to educate them in the principles of the Promethean cult so as to bring them to the fold as the sons of Vulcan. So out of the successor chapters, these dark krakens do not have a specific genetic mutation like the storm giants or the black dragons 
but they do have a psyche problem and that they always seek out the largest opponent in a fight, kind of like orcs in a way. But this is not to say that they have orcish traits. But it is peculiar though among the Astartes who naturally kill everything equally. Next we have the Black Vipers. The Black Vipers are a very secretive Salamander successor chapter that wear black power armor with a red backpack, a red knee plates, a red shoulder plate trims and others. Even the Aquila or the Imperialis on the chest plate is red. So naturally their color pattern is black and red. Like for the Dark Krakens, the Salamanders didn't know about the existence of the Black Vipers. They accidentally learned of their existence in fact quite later on. Even many standard years after they learned of the other Ultima founding successors like the Dragon Spears, the Dark Krakens, the Covenant of Fire, etc. So Sir Gosi, the chaplain, was sent to the chapter by the Salamanders for the same purpose of bringing them to the fold as the Sons of Vulcan. But strangely enough, he disappeared without a trace, either killed or assassinated by them for maybe trying to talk to them about the ways of the Promethean cult. The Black Vipers appear to claim no world for their own, and they only make contact with other Imperial allies during fights and battles, where they come and go like mysterious angels of the Emperor. But one thing was for sure, the chapter was always seen in the presence of the agents of Belisarius Call. In a way, they reflect traits seen in the Alpha Legionnaires, and in the very least, they may be brainwashed and under the authoritative control of the Adeptus Mechanicus, more specifically under Belisarius Call. Then we come to the Dragon Spears. Firstly, their origins is quite mysterious cause in Chapter 9 of the Dawn of Fire, the Wolf Time, Captain Orstanza of the Dragon Spears expresses eagerness to receive Primaris Space Marine reinforcements, indicating they are a pre-existing firstborn successor chapter. However, the 9th edition Codex Astartes of the Space Marines suggests that they were created by Belisarius Call during the Ultima founding. In any way, like the other successor chapters, the Salamanders were kept in the dark about their creation and when they found out they did the regular thing of sending a chaplain. The most peculiar thing about the Dragon Spears is their strong culture of self-sacrifice in battle and endo-cannibalism. Through consuming the flesh of their fallen brothers, the Dragon Spears utilized the Omophagia implants to preserve fragments of their comrades' memories. While this is not a factor for excommunication or inquisitorial intervention, since the gene seed was implanted for that same exact purpose, a regular habit of doing such a thing might drive them to a point of madness or plain freaking out the other space marines with their feasts on their brother's flesh. Next we have the Covenant of Fire. As a primary successor chapter of the Salamanders, akin to the Dragon Spears, Dark Krakens and Black Vipers, they wholeheartedly embrace the Promethean cult in contrast to the Black Vipers who do not share the same enthusiasm for their progenitors' traditions. The Covenant of Fire Space Marines don distinctive orange power armor complemented by black parts. The strangest thing about them is their mentality and also hand in hand their chapter badge. The Covenant of Fire is deeply obsessed with acquiring knowledge about the Imperium, actively pursuing knowledge and information. They meticulously eliminate all traces of heretical material, recognizing that such knowledge represents a deceptive light that inevitably leads to destruction. They burn books and material that contradicts their findings. And what else? Their chapter badge is a book on fire. Do you know who else has the same badge and mentality? The word bearers. So even though they do not show signs of corruption, mutations or dark habits like other chapters, their path is one that we have seen before and it doesn't end well. So this chapter must be watched closely by the Imperial Inquisition. And the last one here, the Iron Drakes. These are a supposed successor chapter of the Salamanders but absolutely nothing is known about them. Well one thing we do know for sure is that they were a part of the Ultima founding which means they are all Primaris but their history, colors, deeds and all are missing from Imperial records, either redacted or kept hidden. Either they were too mutated to be made public, or they fell to chaos right from the start. Or there is another most sinister reason, like that of the Lost Primarchs. And with that we come to the end of this video. So if you like it then check this other one too. And if you want to browse for other content on Warhammer, check out our channel. So subscribe and like for support. And yeah, while you're at it, bang on that bell icon for notifications on new video uploads. Till the next time, take care, boys.